I wanted to take a look at how I'm calculating these resistor values associated with this op amp circuit in this white noise to pink noise filter project I'm doing. I'll be taking a microcontroller 0 to 5 volts out to generate pseudo digital white noise. I want it to go through an op amp buffer right now. I've got it set really for unity gain. It's only here to keep things isolated, partly because I want to have two different outputs and I didn't want that to load down this microcontroller and with all this circuitry and who knows what could be connected to the outside world I don't want to draw too much current from here and it's good to have a low impedance driving source which is also why I'm buffering here at the output of this filter but where am I coming up with this need for a voltage divider and how I'm choosing these values these 100k are an order of magnitude higher than this 10k sort of range and how am I coming up with this weird bias voltage for the op amp? I'm using LT Spice simulations to help me figure some things out along with data sheets. I'm using an LM358 op amp, so to do a better simulation, I can't just use an ideal op amp. It has to have the certain characteristics that this one would have. And depending which library I use, some of them model the features more completely, so really everything has to be kept in mind and limitations of simulation. But one example here, the 358 output is not rail to rail. So I'm powering here from 5 volts, so I have 5 volts and ground single supply. And here on the input, I just have an AC sine wave 0 to 5 volt signal, so it's this gray one here. And I'm going through this voltage divider. Right now I just have it penciled in with really small and really large resistors to simulate that it's not there for now. So the output of that I'm also showing here. It's slightly attenuated from the input sine wave. Then we go into the op amp and it just gets buffered with no gain. And I'm measuring the output. And we're seeing here it gets clipped at 4 volts because that's the characteristics of this particular op amp. And being a single supply, of course, I'm biasing it halfway between 0 and 5 volts. So I have a DC 2.5 volts here, and that would allow an input signal to have a virtual ground at 2.5. And then we can swing above and below without clipping, aside from exceeding the limit on the output. So that's a starting point. And the first thing we might look at is, OK, we're not supposed to be driving it beyond 4 volts because it can't do any more and it just stays there until it drops why don't we just change this attenuation? And I'm using the inverting configuration because that allows me to attenuate or amplify or go unity gain. If I used a non-inverting amplifier, the gain has to be one or higher. I can't attenuate. So let's say we made this 50k and we rerun. So now we've attenuated our signal and it no longer tries to go to 4 volts. So we would think, okay, well, that's good. We have it centered around 2.5 with this bias. It's not clipping the output. Only problem is we always have to read the data sheet. We're still allowing it to go above 3.5 between there and 4 volts. But if we start looking things up, this analog devices app note says the common mode range, the useful VIN, has to impose limits. So here, this would be our ground, and this is our 5 volt supply. We have to look up what our acceptable input common mode range is that we're allowed VIN to go between. So on the 358 datasheet, even though this one is spec'd at 30 volts, for now it's all we got. So the input common mode voltage range, 0 to VCC minus 2. For us, that's 5 minus 2. 0 to 3 volts is what we should be limiting our input. And just double checking over here on this 358 app guideline, it repeats the recommended common mode range, 0 volts, which is our negative supply, up to VCC minus 2. So we shouldn't allow this input signal to go above 3 volts for proper operation. In this simulation, we don't pick up the fact that this might be a problem. There may be other cases where it's okay to allow the input above VCC minus 2, so we kind of have to just do our own babysitting. So that's where this voltage divider comes in. We have 0 to 5 in, we want 0 to 3 out. And for that, if we find a voltage divider calculator, we know we got 5 volts in, we know we want 3 out, we arbitrarily choose the top resistor is a round number 10K, we calculate for the bottom, 
15k would give us 3 volts out max. So if I set that up on here, so now I put the op amp back to unity gain because I know that's what I want. I've added in that voltage divider. Now the input is still 0 to 5 volts. The scaled down version is no more than 3 volts down toward ground, but our output here is still trying to go above 4 volts and it's clipping. So if we are ranging really between say 0 and 3, that means our virtual ground should probably be 1.5 volts rather than the arbitrary half of VCC 2.5. So if I change that, rerun it, now the signal output here no longer is clipping. It's been centered lower at 1.5 as virtual ground. The input and the output are between 0 and 3. Everything's good. We should be operating within the limits of a 358. So now I still have the option, if I really wanted to, I can attenuate this. If for some reason I decided, okay, the signal is still too strong going into this filter or whatever's going on, but to get started, I'm just using it as a buffer. So why do I have 100k on both of these? I could just put 1k for each, as long as both are the same, it's unity gain. But let's say we make it 10k for each and run it. Well, now we've attenuated the input and obviously the output more than we meant to with this divider. Because we have this network of resistors, all these passive elements, they're all close in value, they're interfering with each other, loading effects and such. So if we change that back to 100k, order of magnitude higher, now this is a relatively high impedance compared to this relatively lower impedance. So it's more like having an ideal signal source, low impedance, feeding into a high impedance op amp, and we get more like what we expect. On the output, I arbitrarily threw a load resistor of one meg, just so I could see what happens. We can only draw so much current here, and then we'll start loading our output. If I change that to something really ridiculous like 10 ohms, so I'm really loading this down, it's almost a short circuit now, so we can observe what happens to the output and when it starts behaving not the way we want. So if I made that 50 ohms, we're still attenuating, but not as much. 100 ohms, then it's back to looking okay here. So that's just in case we were trying to drive a really heavy load, we can just see what would happen in the circuit as far as the simulation at least says. We're not really driving any low impedances here that will drag this down, so we're good. And for this bias input, now we know we want 1.5 volts here. 5 volt supply with a divider with these values gives 1.5 out and allows this to work as we expect. So that's where all those values came from. And this is how we observed it and tweaked it and figured out a reasonable set of values to go with, along with app notes and datasheet specs. Who knows, maybe there's still something I didn't consider yet. I'll have to see when I actually get the whole circuit up and running.